You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. You know, for so long, we have talked about how conservatives, white people, Republicans, you name it, use dog whistles, you know, hidden racist phrases, undercover racism to talk to white people in plain sight about black people using this coded language. But I think we should be glad that, you know, they don't do that anymore. And that's why I want to welcome you to the Grio Daily, the only podcast that'll explain why the racist dog whistle is dead. All right. Now, I'm sure you know what a dog whistle is, right? Like, it's when white people use coded language to signal their other white people or their white friends to unite like Voltron in their attempt to silence or oppress black people. What's some of my favorite dog whistles? Uh, One of my favorite dog whistles is Marxist. Colin Kaepernick was a Marxist. Black Lives Matter was a Marxist. Civil Rights Movement was Marxist. W.B. Du Bois, like any black person who fights for freedom is Marxist. Like, they love that dog whistle. Um, Woke has become a dog whistle. We know what woke means. It means being aware of racist events or people, but it's become a dog whistle to just mean, you know, black. The woke ideology of critical race theory, the woke ideology of diversity, equity, and inclusion, just black stuff. Anything black is woke. You know what I'm saying? Probably using lotion has become woke now. The Crown Act, which is a legislation that stops discrimination against black people for how they wear their hair, they call that woke. I don't even know how wanting to wear your hair, the way it comes out of your head became something that was objectionable. But, you know, if you put woke in front of it and then that signals black, then for some reason it'll get white people mad. I don't know what happened around 2016. It seems like something happened. I can't even put my finger on it. Maybe like it was seems like it was in politics around 2016 where I don't know, man, who started it. I don't know. Man, what I don't know. Like, I can't even put my finger on it. But apparently something happened in politics around 2016, especially in the White House, where white people just stopped using dog whistles. And they just went out and said stuff like they're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Like, yeah, that ain't even a dog whistle. That's just like, you know, most of them are bad, but some of them, I assume, I ain't never had no evidence, but I assume some Mexicans are good people. I assume that some black people are smart, but, you know, most of them lazy or criminals. That's why we got to say law and order. Black Lives Matter became evil. They didn't even have to call it Marxist anymore. It just became evil. Colin Kaepernick became a son of a bitch. They didn't even have to, like, say that I don't think he is patriotic. Nah, he was a son of a bitch. I don't know who started these things. I can't put my name on it. It seems like a guy in the White House did it, but I can't, I don't, I can't remember who. But whoever did it, what they proved is that if you stop using dog whistles and just said the racist parts out loud, white people would like you even more. And so what happened is they realized, oh, you don't got to hide the racism and you can be a terrible legislator like Marjorie Telly Green if you just be openly racist, you can get reelected. Or like you don't even got to be smart anymore. You could be dumb like Lauren Boebert, who never graduated from high school, but she's real racist so she can get reelected. You can coalesce the entire Republican Party around your agenda, even if you don't have an agenda except racism. Like if you just say, I mean, we just going to build a wall. We're going to keep out the Muslims. We're going to go and send unbadged law enforcement officers anywhere black people protest. We're going to pass laws that say you can run over protesters. And we're not going to dog whistle anymore. We're going to just say it out loud and you'll become even more popular among white people. The dog whistle is dead, y'all. I'm sorry to announce this on this podcast but if you look at for instance Ron DeSantis Ron DeSantis like he's not charismatic he was terrible during COVID in Florida the crime rate in Florida went up the unemployment rate in Florida went up since he was governor but the only thing he could lean on is to say the racist part out loud he proved the theorem created by whoever that dude was in the White House 
that you don't have to dog whistle anymore. In fact, when you don't dog whistle, you separate yourself from the fellow members of your party because you can be racist and the white people will love it. They'll start having marches like the Patriot Front or like they did in Charlottesville. White lives matter! White lives matter! White lives matter! Because, you know, there were very good people on both sides. You will gain a coalition of loyal supporters because no matter what part of the Republican Party platform you believe in, you have to acknowledge that you kind of got to bow to that guy who was in the White House who killed the dog whistle. Even if you don't agree with them, you can't publicly disagree with them. You can't stop conceding that white nationalism is a attractive thing for white voters. You can't deny that the most popular man in cable news was a white nationalist. It's not like he had a different piece of information than any other of his colleagues. It's not like he was charismatic or good looking or dynamic. No, he was just unwilling to dog whistle. He just said the racist part out loud. And the ascension of these people and their success is proof that if you just be more racist out loud without hiding it, you can gain a more loyal group of supporters. And coming up to the 2024 presidential elections, you're going to see that the racist dog whistle is dead. You're going to see that DeSantis is the number one contender for the GOP nomination besides, you know, that guy who was already in the White House a couple of years ago. You'll see that the other front runners are people who conceded to that orange guy's demands. You'll see that you can't go anywhere as a conservative, as a Republican, as a cold, red-blooded American, unless you stop dog whistling and just call black people what they are. And you know what they are, right? They're the people who want you to subscribe to this podcast on any platform you choose. They are the people who want you to tell a friend about it. They are the people who want you to download that Rio app. And they are the people who use phrases like, if you use a dog whistle, then you must be calling dogs. We'll see you next time on the Griot Daily. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star review, download the Griot app, subscribe to the show, and share it with everyone you know. Please email all questions, suggestions, and compliments to podcast at thegriot.com. You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. The 80s gave us unforgettable songs from Bob Marley, De La Soul, and Public Enemy. I'm a black man, and I can never be a veteran. Being Black, the 80s is a podcast docuseries hosted by me, Torre, looking at the most important issues of the 80s through the songs of the decade. Can I have another hit? The dope man stand up. I don't give a fuck. A decade when crack kingpins controlled the streets but lost their humanity. You couldn't be like those soft, smiling, happy-go-lucky drug dealers. You had to suppress that. It was a time when disco was part of gay liberation. It provided the information to counter narratives that were given to gay people by the straight world. This is the funkiest history class you'll ever take. Join me, Torre, for Being Black the 80s on the Griot Black Podcast Network or wherever you listen to podcasts.